guys, it's Crystal, and today I'm gonna show you guys what's on my iPhone XS Max and all the apps and things that I use on there. So let's get into it. The first app that I'm gonna talk about is something that I've been starting my day with lately, which is the Colgate app right over here on the first page. And shout out to Colgate for sponsoring today's video because I have been loving this app. The app connects to this toothbrush right here, the Connect E1 Colgate Electric Toothbrush. And if you guys know me, I love electric toothbrushes because I feel like they do a better job at brushing your teeth overall. So this one has been amazing. I mean, it looks great. It's, it's really, really light for an electric toothbrush, like probably the lightest one I've ever felt. It brushes your teeth really well, but what makes it so great is the app that it connects to because it has so many features that you don't usually get with any toothbrush. So I have my app opened up here, and as soon as I turn it on, if you follow the Coach Plus program, in the app, it'll automatically go into there and tell you where you should be brushing. And until you brush there, it's not going to pick up any data that you're brushing. So once I start, it's going to tell me how long I should be staying on that area. So let's do that. So I just finished brushing my teeth and here it says I got 50% of my surface area covered in my mouth. So. Yeah, I didn't know how bad I was brushing my teeth. Like this is what I do all the time. And clearly I could be doing a better job. The yellow areas is basically where you're not brushing enough. And the white areas is where you are brushing enough. And that data was all collected following the Coach Plus program, but there's tons of different programs here to help you reach your brushing goals. There's even games for kids to play to encourage them to brush their teeth regularly. Let's be honest though. I'm probably gonna be playing them all the time. Now that I have this logged in, I can follow up and just try to improve every time that I brush my teeth. And you don't have to have the app open every time you brush your teeth. It'll automatically log this in because it works via Bluetooth. So yeah, you don't have to have your phone with you every time you do it. It's only filled halfway to, I only have my apps going to about halfway just because I prefer the declutteredness of that right now. Don't know how long I'll keep that going, but as of now, that's what I've been doing. And this page has pretty much all the basic apps that we're used to seeing, camera, settings. I have Google Calendar instead of Apple's calendar right now, just because I like the way that integrates with Gmail. It just does a really good job at scanning whatever is going on in Gmail to Google Calendar. So if you're a Gmail user, I highly recommend using Google Calendar. And that's followed by photos, clock, Gmail, and weather just some more everyday basic apps. And then the health folder, let's go into that one because I've recently added some things into there that I've really been loving to use. So we have Apple's health, Apple Watch, activity, and I love my Apple Watch so much, but recently I've been using my Fitbit Versa a lot and I will be mentioning it in an upcoming video as well. It's just, it's a great option if you don't want to spend as much in a smartwatch as you would with an Apple Watch. It does a great job at tracking health and fitness automatically too without even trying. And the last three apps in this folder are meditating and stress relief apps, I guess. Like like meditating apps. Headspace is meditating with voice. So there's somebody talking to you. I've started the basics course here and basically it's, it's like a, a British guy just talking to you and telling you how to breathe. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but it really like, it actually helps. Like I don't, like I said, I never saw myself getting into anything like this. But after I did the first course, I just, I really, it really sucks you in. Like you really start to pay attention to the way that you're breathing. I've only done it like three or four times, so. I'll keep using it and see how it goes, but for now, it's been good. Slumber is another one that's more, I've been using it at nighttime. Again, this is one that has voice, but also sounds and like background effects. That's the cool thing about this one, the background effects. I find that I don't really listen to what the person is saying as much, but more so paying attention to the background noises and all the different effects. And the last meditating app that I have here is Calm. And with Calm, you get the best of both worlds. You get meditations with people's voices and also just sounds like soundscapes and music. You can choose whatever you want. There's a whole bunch of different categories. You can even have Matthew McConaughey read you a bedtime story. <laughs> How amazing does that sound? Well, hello there. I'm Matthew McConaughey and tonight I'll be reading a special sleep story called Wonder. <laughs> In my productivity folder, I just have two apps, reminders and notes. I haven't really, I feel like I haven't filled up my phone with every app that I use yet because I was using the 10R for a while and some other phones. But yeah, right now, just reminders and notes in here. In the finance folder, of course, we have all the banking and money related apps 
Then there's the app store, Instagram, which is my favorite form of social media besides YouTube and YouTube studio to take a look at analytics and comments and all that stuff for my channel. And then there's the Colgate app, which I mentioned, Spotify, because Spotify is still my number one go-to over Apple Music. Like I've said this before, but it's better for discovering music if you wanna get into new music. The discovery tools on there are better than in Apple Music. And then we have Twitter, of course. Can't live without Twitter. But on to the next page. A whole bunch of folders, just folders for days. First folder that I have is for photo and video. Just a whole bunch of photo video editing apps, mostly photo editing apps. But starting with Lightroom, I mostly go in there for all the basic editing. So I manage exposure, contrast, the highlights and shadows, all that stuff in here. I mostly love it though for its auto feature because it'll automatically set the lighting to what it thinks it looks best. And a lot of the time it does a really great job at it. And after Lightroom, I'll usually hop into Visco because I love a lot of the filters on there. And lens distortions is for adding light fills. I've definitely mentioned this on a What's My iPhone before, along with a lot of the things that I use, but I'm still, I'm still using it, I'm still loving it. But apart from that, I have some other photo editing apps that I don't use as much, but I still use. Actually, Preview is not a photo editing app, but it's to preview your Instagram feed before you post the photo, if you care about that stuff, which I do. Slightly. Snapseed is always one of the first photo editing apps that I add onto my phone, even though I don't use it as much as like Lightroom and Visco. It's just another another great app for photo editing. There's a lot of different tools on here. Oh, I mostly go into Snapseed for curves because it's just a nice big view of the picture curve. Like a lot of apps just have this a lot smaller. It's not an, as easy to deal with. And yes, yeah, Snapseed is not the only app that has this, but like I said, I just like that it's nice and big. So it's easy to use. And another photo editing app is Afterlight, which again, has a lot of our basic tools that we're used to. But what's cool and different with this one that I really like is Again, the textures that you can add here. You can add a lot of cool looking light leaks that you don't really get with any other app that I use. And we have Retouch, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's for retouching and fixing things in photos. Not the best framing in this photo, but we'll just ignore that. And I haven't even edited it or anything, so it's just straight up photo from the camera roll. The thing that I would do here is remove that person in the background. You can actually do that. There's the object removal tool. If you zoom in, you can carefully just paint over her. So we'll do that right now. So after you highlight the object that you want to remove, you press go and it's gone. And I know it looks kind of like weird zoomed in like this, but when you zoom out and you edit the photo, you really, people won't really notice like unless you really zoom in and look at it. The second photo and video folder that I have are not really editing apps more so for different things that I have. So the DJI app for the Spark, the Ronin app for my Ronin S gimbal, Slider Plus for the camera slider, and the VR180 app for a VR headset that I have. So yeah, there's that. And the Google folder for Google apps. In my shopping folder, a lot of the online shopping apps that I use are here. Um, the first app is Vellum, which is a wallpaper app that I always have on my phones because yeah, just I really love Vellum. I've loved Vellum for such a long time. There's so many different categories of different wallpapers and they look really good. Even though the one that I have right now is not, not super exciting. You can go into any category and choose a certain wallpaper. You can blur it out and see what that looks like, which I actually, pr I prefer for the blurred so there's a separation from the apps to the background. My next folder is the travel folder with my preferred airlines, United and American, mostly United. In my lifestyle folder is just really smart home things. Oh, I'm missing, I'm missing some things in here. But right now, you and home. And the next folder with a little car emoji. I used to do this thing where I had emojis for every folder label, but now I only have this car. Why do I, why did I put the car if I'm not doing that anymore? In the business folder, what do we have Dropbox. Oh, that's where I put docs. Docs shouldn't be in here. I mean, I'll, I'll leave it in here because I guess like I mostly use docs for if I'm writing something up for an email or something. In my food folder, I have Dunkin' and Starbucks. I, I'm more of a Starbucks person. I prefer Starbucks coffee because there's so much 
options, but I have Dunkin' on here because Dunkin' is my closest option. For me to go to a Starbucks, I gotta drive like 30 minutes. And of course I have Happy Cow, which I always put on every phone that I have, and I've definitely talked about it before, but Happy Cow is good for looking for restaurants around you that have vegan and vegetarian options. And of course Yelp, Yelp does a great job of that too. Next to Yelp, I have Postmates and Seamless on the other side, both food delivery apps, and Vegan Pocket, which you can use to scan different items that you buy in a store or supermarket. You can scan the barcode and see if it's vegan without even having to read the ingredients. And the games folder. I'm not the biggest smartphone gamer, I would say, but I do like playing games on my phone. And I usually have gaming apps, even though I don't use them all the time. These three apps on the side here, like the three on the corner, they're good for like your brain, like they get you thinking. I love games like this. So this first one, I Love You. You basically have to move all the colors to like where they belong, like gradient wise. It's really fun. There we go. You see, like I just, I've made that gradient and level complete onto the next. It's just very, it's also like therapeutic and relaxing. And then we have the game Topple, another brain game, which, I've been stuck in this level, but basically you have to slide the shape into this outline. Can't go down because it won't fit in the grid. Yeah, I've been stuck on that, but I like that game. Dissembler is another one, basically like the last two. You have to get rid of all the squares, but you have to make sure that everything connects. Like you can't leave one standing alone. Candy Crush, I know that's like a classic and like it's so overplayed, but I, I, I like Candy Crush. And my caterpillar, I recently discovered this purely a throwback to a childhood book that I used to read. It was like my favorite book ever. But yeah, my caterpillar is an AR app. So it uses AR and the camera and you can see a whole scene in real life. The caterpillar gets bigger the more pairs that you set down. and the Amazon folder, much like the Google folder, all of the Amazon apps in here. And in books, we have podcasts and Audible. I mean, podcast is not really books and Audible. Audible makes more sense to put in the books folder, but podcast, not so much, but it's kind of, you know, those two kind of go together for me, so I put them both in there. That concludes what's on my iPhone XS Max. Perfect timing, because we are at 2%, so let me stop that recording. But yeah, let me know in the comments which which apps you guys are currently using, whether that be on iPhone, Android, whatever the case may be. Let me know the current apps because I always want to try new things. So let me know. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you later.